Hello and welcome to WePC, my name is Jay and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Razorblade 15 Advanced Edition. I'm going to give you an overview of what it was like to use this thing for quite a few weeks. I'm going to test it through some games, show you the benchmarks that we had and then we'll round it up. I'll give you a few opinions on whether you should buy this thing or not. So I guess the only logical thing to do as this is a gaming laptop is to throw it into some games whilst I talk to you about what it's like. So we're going to do that. So we're going to jump into CSGO. This is a really great game to test out refresh rate. You'll find that in our monitor videos, we always use Counter-Strike. Uh, it's a very, very good game to just really max out what your display can do. Obviously, this is a 240 hertz refresh rate, um, which is crazy on a laptop. Um, from a personal experience, it's incredible to use. You really do notice the difference between that and a 144. So instantly, I mean, I've been testing out quite a few monitors at the minute that are 360 hertz refresh rate, 240 hertz refresh rate, and you'd think, playing on something smaller, say a 15 inch like this display is, you would notice a substantial difference. However, I don't, I'm not taken out of the game as much as you may think. Playing competitive games, if anything, the smaller the screen, the better. I like playing on potentially the smallest screen that I can actually get when playing Call of Duty and Counter-Strike, just because it eliminates the need for your head to constantly be moving to look where the target is. And with the 240 Hertz refresh rate, it's really, really well put together. Um, when enemies are running on this game, you can see them at like lightning speed. So there's no ghosting or trailing behind them. Everything's just done really, really well. And of course that's in part due to the i7 and the 3080 Max-Q that is inside this device. So the 3080 is gonna give you a lot of power. Um, remember it is the 3080 Max-Q, which the equivalent of that would be the 3070 in a desktop PC. Um, but to get that true performance out of that Max-Q 3080, you are going to need to use the power brick. If you take the power brick out of this, performance can drop up to 50%, which is substantial. Um, we'll show you a bit of that later. Also, when you do take out the power, it switches from using your dedicated GPU to using your integrated graphics. Um, and it also switches you down from that 240Hz refresh rate down to 60Hz. You can change this in your graphic settings um, using the, the video control panel. Um, however, when you do that, of course, it's gonna substantially drain your battery and potentially over time actually damage that battery. So even though you can do that, you're not gonna get likely more than 30 minutes of gameplay. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind. It does reduce down to 60 Hertz to protect your battery. So if you are potentially gonna go in and mess with that, know the effects that it does come with. So it does come with a 2K resolution. Um, as we said in the unboxing, you kind of have to warrant how much that actually means to you on a screen size of 15 inch. Of course, when you use a monitor, say 32 inch, even as high as in the 40 inches and you're using a 2K resolution, yes, you're gonna see that as clear as day because you've got a larger surface space to work with. On a 15 inch, it's very hard to see that noticeable fidelity increase. When you are doing video editing, it's much clearer, but unless you're getting super close to the laptop, which I'm, I really hope you're not, because that's gonna damage your eyes in the long run, you really aren't gonna see it that much. Um, and at the substantial mark up increase in price from this 2K resolution, as opposed to the previous uh, Razorblade 15, the price is substantially higher. So that definitely has to be in your considerations when you're looking to purchase this machine. Yes, it does come with on paper what sounds really attractive but in a real life scenario it may not be exactly as impressive as you may think. However, if you are going to be using this laptop not just for gaming but for multimedia use, it does come with 100% sRGB coverage, 88% Adobe RGB coverage and a 99% DCI-P3 which of course is going to be absolutely incredible for video editors as I've mentioned. The thing that's quite strange is the brightness on this machine isn't the greatest. It is quite dull. In a dark room, it's not gonna be as affected, but when you are playing this in a somewhat brighter room like this, you do notice just how dim it actually is. And there is no way of going in and changing that. So it's definitely something to consider. What we're gonna do now, as we've seen quite a lot of CSGO, I'm gonna switch over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, just so I can show you how immersive that display actually is. We'll throw it into a higher fidelity. We'll put it into 2K and show you how great the actual picture looks. And we'll, uh, we'll compare what it looks like when you take the power out and plug it back in. Okay, so we've loaded up Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is an older title, but it still holds up graphically uh, now. So that's why we always use this to test out our higher end GPUs, just to see what they can actually push out. So we have got this now at 2K resolution, 240 Hertz, and it looks absolutely incredible. The colors are incredibly vibrant. I wanna show you one thing now. So if I just go into a well-lit area and I move around, you can see just how smooth the 
refresh rate is. Of course, we're only filming this at 25 frames a second, so you're not gonna see as smooth as it is with my own eyes, but it looks absolutely incredible. If I take the power out, I don't know how well the camera's picking this up, but that looks so jerky now. It looks, it's now dropped down to 60, 60 FPS. And even though 60 frames per second looks somewhat smooth for the most part, this doesn't even feel like it holds up. So if I just do some running around, you can see now a lot of tearing come into place. It's nowhere near as smooth an experience as I, just, as I just had when I had the power in. And this is one thing that you definitely have to consider. Although a laptop is built to be portable, for the most part, you aren't gonna be using this as a portable device. Yes, you can take it with you to put on a train, but to get the best gaming experience that you particularly want, especially when you are paying this price, you are gonna need this power brake plugged in. So do be aware that that is something that you're gonna to have to consider. I'm gonna show you that one more time, just so you can see. If I just run now and start shaking the screen, plug the power in, and you can instantly see the smoothness come into life. It looks absolutely incredible, I must say, like. I've been using this now for quite a while. I've played a lot of my favorite games on this and that 240 hertz refresh rate looks incredible. Even though it is a 15 inch screen, it doesn't deteriorate the quality that you do get from this machine. I really have enjoyed every moment of playing every game that I've played on this, especially competitive games. If you are a competitive gamer and you want to be playing on the move and you're kind of worried about that smaller screen size, honestly, it, it hasn't taken me out of my gameplay at all. It's been and it's been a stellar experience. One thing to mention about this machine, the edges are incredibly sharp, which to the eye looks absolutely incredible. It looks very, very sleek. However, when you are typing and playing games, you are resting your wrist on this thing. And those sharp edges after a considerable amount of time will start to dig into your palm of your hand. Obviously it depends on how you type. If you're a person that likes to lean on their elbows and type over like this, it's not gonna affect you. But if you do lean on this thing and rest your arms on it, it is going to be uncomfortable for quite a while. So maybe investing in somewhat of a wrist rest, but even then like finding one that's gonna fit this particular machine might be a difficult thing to do. So it is definitely something to consider. Okay, so I've shown you some gameplay of this thing. I've told you about my personal experience. Um, my general overview is it's absolutely incredible and I've enjoyed every moment of it. And I wanna show you now what the hardware in this machine is capable of. So I'm gonna show you some benchmarks that we've done, which is also on our WePC benchmark channel. So if you hit the tab that's just popped up there, that will take you to there. It'll also be in the description down below. So you can definitely check out our benchmarks channel. But I'm gonna to report to you some of the figures that we have pulled from that. And uh, we'll get into that now. So we first tested this in Counter-Strike, of course, and we tested it in 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. So 1080p saw an average of 207 FPS. At 1440p, it gave us an average of 199 FPS. And finally, 4K granted us an average of 187 FPS. Switching to some single player titles, Control gave us 87 FPS at 1080p, 55 FPS at 1440p and 27 FPS at 4K. And you have to remember, Control is a very demanding game at times. And for a laptop, these numbers aren't bad at all. So as you can see, the 3080 Max-Q is, is holding up very, very well here. And because we know that some of you like synthetic benchmarks, we also did a few of them too. Cinebench R23 gave us a single core score on the i7-10875H of 1205 just 25 points below the desktop i7-7700K and a multi-core score of 6918. That's just above a Xeon X5650, which is a CPU made for multi-thread workloads. And just for good measure, we also threw it into 3D Mark Time Spy on the extreme 4K setting. And in this, the Razer Blade managed a CPU score of 2962 and a graphic score of 4702. So as you can see from our benchmarks and my own personal opinion, this is an incredible machine. But if I'm being perfectly honest, I would expect nothing less from a machine of this caliber price point and to be honest just being the successor of the previous Razer Blade 15 which was an incredible laptop. Honestly I've enjoyed every single moment I've been able to use this machine for both gameplay and for video editing. I've enjoyed both of them equally and to be honest I really if if I was in the position to buy this laptop I personally would but that is because I am a gamer I play a lot of games maybe too many games and I also do a lot of video editing so this is the perfect machine to hit that fine balance. But as I previously said, the previous Razer Blade 15, which does have the 2080 Max-Q, is already perfect for gaming. Upgrading to this machine if you already have that may not be the best decision. However, if you are looking for a this does everything well machine, this could be the one for you. But please just do keep in mind that the 2K resolution that is on this machine is what is driving the price quite high. And you do have to consider whether that 2K resolution on a screen of this size 
is worth that particular markup. Overall, I really enjoy this machine. I cannot recommend it more if it is something you are in the market for and it does hit that fine balance of what you specifically need. So that has been our overall review of this machine. It's an incredible, incredible device. And if you are in the position to buy it, then I can't think of another reason that you shouldn't do so. As always, links to the product will be in the description down below. And whilst you are down there, definitely check out our WePC Benchmarks channel. We'll leave a video to this specific device so you can see our full benchmarks in full. If you enjoyed our video, I would love if you could leave a like on it and subscribe if you are new to our channel. We are so close to 20,000 subscribers and we'd love for you to join us on that journey. If you hit that rectangle over there, that'll take you to another one of our YouTube videos that I know you will enjoy. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.